Welcome to Oliver Travel Trailers. Today we're going to take a look at the Anderson weight distribution hitch and how to properly disconnect from the tow vehicle and then reconnect when you're ready to take off. Let's go ahead and take a look now. First step we want to do is go ahead and disconnect the seven pin from the tow vehicle. You'll always want to disconnect this because if you leave it hooked up overnight, it'll go ahead and continue pulling 12 volt power from the tow vehicle and cause it to drain the batteries. Now we do run the cable through this little metal clip in the Bulldog coupler. Uh, we do that just to secure this cable a little better. You can go ahead and remove that as well. Kind of put that seven pin cable off to the side. First, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the breakaway cable. Then we'll go ahead and take our chains loose. Now once we have our chains loose, the next step is gonna be disconnecting the Anderson weight distribution hitch. Now on that, what we're gonna do, the easiest method that we have found is go ahead and leave this connected here at the ball and raise the front end of the camper just a little bit. What we're trying to do is remove the uh, tongue weight from the tow vehicle and it's gonna put some slack in these chains here that are currently tight. Once we've raised it up a little bit, now we have that slack in the, in the chains, we can go ahead and pull the pin. Sometimes this may be a little tight, you may have to wiggle this as you pull the pin out. But once you've got the pin out of the way, you can just drop that. Then you'd wanna go ahead, lower the jack or the camper. Once we've got it lowered back down, then we can go ahead and pop open the coupler Raise the jack off of the tow vehicle. And at this point, uh, you just simply pull the tow vehicle forward, go ahead and level up the camper, and you're ready to go. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at hooking back up the tow vehicle once we're breaking camp, getting ready to go. The first thing, of course, you'll wanna do is pull the tow vehicle up and under the coupler. Uh, once you've got it lined up, we'll go ahead and just drop the trailer down on the tow vehicle. All right. Now once we have it down, we'll go ahead and set the coupler lock on there. Now at this point, because we're looking at the Anderson weight distribution hitch, we're gonna wanna hook it up. The easiest way is to go ahead, now that we've got this coupled, we're gonna raise the front of the trailer back up a little bit. And I typically wanna raise it until I see all of the weight taken off of the hitch here. Once we do that, we wanna go ahead and just take the little triangle plate, stretch the chains forward, slide it up on the bottom of that ball, and then we should be able to put our pin through. All right. Now that we've got that locked in, we can go ahead and drop the camper back down. Mm -hmm. And our Anderson chains are good and tight at this point. Now what we'll wanna do is go ahead and hook our tow chains up. We typically crisscross these. All right. You'll want to connect your safety breakaway as well. Make sure this is always connected to the tow vehicle. You do not wanna connect this to the safety chains or something that could come loose from the tow vehicle. Then of course, we'll wanna go ahead and put our pin through the coupler to lock it down and in place. Placing our seven pin cable inside just so that it kinda of helps hold it there and secure. And then we just plug our seven pin into the tow vehicle. At this point, you'd wanna just do a walk around of the camper, double check the rear jacks and check the lights and you're good to go. Sometimes when backing into a campsite, you may find that in order to get the trailer straight and in the campsite, the truck itself may be at a slight angle. Now this is okay, and if you take a look here, you'll notice the triangle plate chains, everything is still nice and straight with the camper itself, but the ball housing and the ball mount with the truck is at a slight angle. Now, this does not change the way that you would disconnect the Anderson ball at this time, 
However, uh, in a moment we will look at how it might change reconnecting to the Anderson. Uh, but again, at this point, it's not going to change the way that we disconnect. We'd simply lower our jack, which we'll go ahead and do now. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and lower the jack down so I can take the pressure off the back of the truck. It'll give us some slack in our chains and make it a lot easier to go ahead and drop the triangle plate from the Anderson ball. First I'm going to look at ri uh, raising it just enough so that I see a little bit of movement in that ball mount. Uh, that'll tell me that it's removed the weight from the ball, uh, but we don't want to lift the back end of the truck. Once we do that, we'll go ahead and just take the pin out. We can drop our chains. Right. Now before we go ahead and pull the coupler open, we're gonna wanna go ahead and lower the camper back down because right now we've pulled up on that ball. If we were to go ahead and pop it loose, it'll snap the two apart. So we want to go ahead and put some of that weight back down on the ball. And then once we have it open, we just go ahead and take the camper completely off the back of the truck. So pretty much the same exact disconnect method, uh, even though we are at an angle. However, now what we want to look at is when we get ready to hook back up, if we are able to pull in straight and back up and connect straight, how that's going to affect the Anderson and what to do if that happens. All right, so now we want to look at it to where we've backed up and we're getting ready to reconnect to the Anderson. Now, when we disconnected, we were at an angle with the truck, but now you can see we're straight in line with the camper. If you look a little closer though at our pin, it's not going straight across the ball. It's kind of turned to an angle, which is gonna make it difficult to get the triangle plate back on. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. The way that Anderson recommends is actually to loosen uh, from the brackets until you can get the triangle plate on and then tighten the side you need to to get it to turn that ball to the direction that you're wanting it. The other way in which we're going to show you is to close this on to the, to the ball. Close the coupler down onto the ball and depending on if you have someone to help they could come back here and help hold some of the chains up because we're going to actually get in the, uh, the tow vehicle and pull up and forward and to a certain direction in order to turn it because what we're turning is this mount and this housing and we've got to turn it back to the same direction we were when we disconnected which is slightly to the to the left of us right. the next thing we'll want to do is definitely go ahead and raise our jack Raising the jack lowers the camper back down onto the ball in the tow vehicle. Now I'm not going to raise it all the way up because I'm barely going to move and turn slightly to the left. Uh, and then that way we'll be able to see how that housing rotates. So what I did was uh, just simply made a very sharp turn to the left as I pulled up, put the tow vehicle back in about the same spot it was in when we had originally disconnected. So what that has done is turn this pin directly straight line across the coupler here, which will make it a lot easier to hook this triangle plate back up. So let's go ahead and do that now. Again, we're just raising it up to bring the weight off of the tow vehicle, which will give us a little bit more slack in our chains to make it easier to connect. And once you have the triangle plate on, we'll wanna go ahead and put the pin in. Now I do recommend a small mallet dead blow. It does make it a little easier to put the pin back in. 
sometimes it can be a little tight if it's not perfectly lined up. But once we have the triangle plate hook back up, then we'd simply lower the camper back onto the tow vehicle. That'll give us the tension in our Anderson chains. And the last thing we'd want to do is just go ahead and reconnect our safety chains, our breakaway, and our seven pin. And don't forget your little safety pin for the coupler. And once your jack is fully retracted, you're ready to go. Let's take a look at the Anderson chains. Now you'll see some tension now that we've lowered the camper back on the tow vehicle. The more tension you have, the more weight distribution it'll apply across the tow vehicle. And of course each chain kind of works against the other in order to, to have the anti-sway feature. But let's take a look at tightening up these chains in case you want to apply a little bit more weight distribution to the tow vehicle. Now the easiest way to do that is we're gonna go ahead and raise the, the camper back off the tow vehicle, giving us a little bit of slack in the chains and that makes it a little bit easier to tighten it. Now you don't want to go too far with it, we just want a little bit of uh, slack in the chains as you can see. Now we're going to crawl up underneath the camper so that we can tighten each side. Here under the camper we're looking at the A-frame section. And of course this big section here is our straight tongue that comes through the, the center. Uh, the Anderson brackets are actually installed here. Uh, in the A-frame section, not on the complete outside, but just inside in the center supports. So what we want to do in order to tighten these chains up a little bit to give a little bit more weight distribution, we'll take the socket that is supplied with the Anderson kit and come under here, tighten it up just a bit. Now you'll want to count the uh, threads that you have on one side to the other to try to match them as close as possible. But once you've tightened both sides up, We'll go ahead and drop the weight back on the tow vehicle and see if it is the weight that we're, we're wanting. If not, we just come back here and start the process over again to tighten it up just a little bit more. Now that we've tightened our chains, we're going to go ahead and drop the camper back on the tow vehicle to check and see what our tension is with the weight added. Once we've dropped it down, the Tension has been added back to those chains, and of course this time we can take a look at the tow vehicle to see if some of that weight distribution has been applied across the front end, and if not, we can simply just raise the camper back up and go ahead and tighten it just a little bit more until we get it exactly where we think it needs to be.